Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Alrighty. So we've got clicker ready. Hi everybody. I'm Kirsty O'Callaghan, um, the owner, as, as um, was said, the owner of Unity Words and the author of Separated by Work. So right now I'm going to be talking to you about getting organised in the overwhelm. And when you're separated by work, it can be quite overwhelming. There is so much to do, and we're also on different um, routines and different swings, and how can we fit that all in with that person coming and going uh, around everything we've got to do? And then there's sometimes we can do it. Oh, you got it? And sometimes we can do it on, a, on our own. For those of you that aren't actually here, that was just a lifesaver toy with a little kid come running across the stage. So, um, so yeah, for those of, and, and most of the time we're actually doing it on our own, and then the other person's there to help us, but they're quite out of, out of sync with what our routine and our children's routine is, and so they're really struggling as to where they'll fit in. So today, I, oh, there we go. I'm gonna be sharing with you some tips on how to get organized. So first of all, as you can see here, the top three tips is be prepared. Now that's really important, so it's like, when, what is our swings? When is the other person at home? What, what is expected in our home? And what could happen that's unexpected? So um, make allowances for those times when there's extra sporting events, when the other person's coming home, when birthdays are, when we've got to go away to see family, when we want to book in holidays. So just be prepared, have a look at your year as a whole to start with and the things that may or may not go wrong. And then pause and reflect and update. This is really, really important. Take the time out to plan. Um, a look, there is a saying that uh, for every hour you plan, there's an extra 10 hours in the day. And I think that's really true. So you might think it's time consuming to plan these things out, but ultimately you're gonna be saving yourself a lot of time. And also reflecting on what your family's needs are. And then eat the elephant beetle. So I love this saying, eat the elephant beetle. How many of us really do procrastinate? How many of us put up with things or tolerate things that we really don't need to be doing or saying yes to. So eat the elephant beetle and stop procrastinating. And that means taking on the biggest thing first. What is the biggest thing you want to achieve or do that you have been putting off? And think about that, what am I putting it off? And then why am I putting it off? Is it because I'm actually not meant to be doing it? Or is it because I don't want to do it and why don't you want to do it? So my top three tips are be prepared, pause and reflect and update, and eat the elephant beetle. So prior preparation prevents poor performance. And as we were talking about before, get into that planning. So have a weekly plan or schedule. And I'm going to be um, sharing with you how to get a hold of my time, to, uh, time and management and choice management schedule at the end of this talk. Also, have a flexible routine. So when we say flexible, that with kids and with the fly-in, fly-out lifestyle, we need to be a little bit flexible because different things will happen um, and come up that we need to have that time to deal with. But basically, if you've got a weekly plan and schedule in motion, um, you'll be able to get through those quite easily. And that can include a cut-off time. So for me, at night, generally, unless I'm working, um, 7.30 is my downtime. I will not work. I will not um, do too many things. My friends not even know not to ring me because that is my time out, that's my zone out time and that's my um, time where I can re-energise. So it's really important to make sure that you're counting in not only what you've got to do, but what you need and what your needs are. Um, also have a list, I love a good list. Lists are so very important and it gets it out of our head and onto a piece of paper. So we can often ask ourselves, what's the best use of my time right now? So I have a list in the kitchen for everything that needs being done there. I have a list in my office. I have a list in the car. I've even got a little notebook in my bag at all times. So that I'm not having to remember and think over things, which takes extra stress and takes extra mind, mind power. I don't need to do that, so I make lists. The three Ds, these are my favorite. So do, delegate, or dump. So what is it that you really have to do? What do you really need to do? And then what can you delegate? What can you be asking for help for? What can you be giving to somebody else to do? And also, what can you dump? Maybe the three hours you spend on Facebook every day would be, you know, you can think about dumping some of that time. Saying yes to people you don't really need to say yes to. Meeting everybody else's needs instead of yours. So what can you do? What can you delegate? And what can you dump? 
Asking for help is so very important. You would help anybody, and I'm sure other people can help you. It's just about asking the right person. So who can help you, and who is the right person to help you when you um, are feeling overwhelmed, when you really need someone to step up for you? Also, let everybody know how it works for your family. So if you've got your schedule, you've got your list, when is a good time to be catching up? You allow people to know what's happening for you. You allow your partner to know what your routine is when they get home. Then they'll be able to help you to meet all those expectations. Okay, and you'll also, other people will get used to your routine like me at 7.30. My friends know not to ring me because that's my time and I've let them know that. And then stick with it. So they say it takes about 28 days to create a habit. So a lot of people fall off the wagon at about week two with anything. So if you just stick with it and your new routine, make the changes where they're needed, you'll get the most out of getting organised in the overwhelm. But there's another quick tip I want to give you as well, that quite often our physical environment is a representation of our mental environment. So have a look around you and quite often it's really hard to start sorting through um, what's going on in our head. So how about start sorting through what's going on in your environment first, clean out that car, start organising your office, organising your house and tidying all that up and you'll find that mentally you'll start to settle down a little bit and be stronger and be more able to deal with what's going on in your life and the overwhelm. So thank you very much. I, um, I, if you want to know more information or get a handout, there's some down here and I have some with some really great tips on. Now, what I'm going to do is if you text me now with your name, your email and your, and your phone number will come through with that, I will give you a tip sheet on how to declutter and I'll also give you a copy of my time choice management schedule that, um, and some instructions on how to use that and uh, that's yours for free. So thank you very much everybody.